millions of years, we can see something is rearranging the islands. Hidden beneath the ocean, the Earth's crust has broken into vast plates. Deeper still, the Earth's core is at work. It's hotter than the surface of the sun. So hot, it generates movement in the rock beneath the crust. These movements push and pull the plates around the globe and carry the oceans and the islands with them. Millions of years race by. Seeing it like this, our planet seems active, changing, alive. Over 400 million years, a vast new supercontinent takes shape, called Rodinia. In the shallow waters around Rodinia, stromatolites have been working their magic for over two billion years, pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. The temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, and the days are 18 hours long. But this looks more like Mars than Earth. To find life here, we need to move on, through time. state of Washington, 750 million years ago. Some force from deep inside the planet itself is ripping the crust to pieces. It's as though the world is tearing apart. And there's only one force powerful enough to do this. Heat. It escapes from the Earth's molten core, stretching and weakening the crust. Centimeter by centimeter, year by year, the great supercontinent is splitting in two. The intense geological activity has spawned a mass of volcanoes. These pump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There's smoke and gas everywhere. carbon dioxide mixes with water to make acid rain. The rocks absorb the acid rain, including its carbon dioxide. And there are a lot of rocks on the Earth right now, exposed when the continent tore apart. So many that vast quantities of carbon dioxide are absorbed out of the atmosphere and locked up in the Earth's rocks. There's not enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to trap the sun's heat around the planet. In just a few thousand years, the temperature plummets to around minus 50 degrees. This frozen wasteland 
is southern Australia, 650 million years ago. It's the start of what some scientists call Snowball Earth, a period they believe to be the longest, coldest ice age ever to grip the planet. A vast wall of ice, thousands of meters high. The ice is unstoppable. The more ice there is, the more sunlight it reflects away from the planet, and the faster the ice spreads. And there's a second ice sheet, just as high. The two sheets spread away from the poles towards each other to meet at the equator. This sheet up to three kilometers thick entombs the entire planet. First the planet was a molten ball of fire, now it's a frozen ball of ice. Virtually all the sun's light and warmth reflects back into space. but it can't last forever. Something must release the Earth from this frozen prison. And when it does, who knows whether life will have survived beneath the ice. The surface is frozen, but the core is still hotter than the sun's surface. Volcanoes have been erupting since the world began to freeze. But up until now, even their heat and power made no impact on the ice. Volcanoes pump out billions of tons of carbon dioxide. Before the big freeze, the Earth's rocks absorbed most of the CO2. But now, with the rocks smothered in ice, there's nothing to absorb the gas so it fills the atmosphere. Like a blanket, it traps the sun's warmth around the planet. Temperatures rise until now, after 15 million years, the ice begins to melt. thought that during Snowball Earth, the ice pushed the crust down. Now, as it melts, the crust bounces up. This creates fissures and weak spots, and more and more volcanoes. These volcanoes release more carbon dioxide and push the temperature up even higher. The melt gathers momentum. Oxygen levels rocket. Through a series of chemical reactions, the ice has created oxygen. While the planet was frozen, the sun's ultraviolet rays reacted with water molecules in the ice to produce a chemical rich in oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide the same chemical that bleaches hair. Now, as the ice melts, the hydrogen peroxide breaks down and releases massive amounts of oxygen. <laughs> 